There's another one I'm still laughing and smiling. So here we go. They're telling us to do the chain rule again. But this time they've written to get the derivative of a chain rule question. My goodness. Ready? Get the derivative. Get the derivative of a chain rule question. Then they, of course, they're going to say when x equals 2. And they're going to tell you the values. So we're going to come back to substitution all the time. Remember, all this is about substitution. No matter how they write it, no matter how they say it, it's still going to be chain rule and it's still going to be a substitution. So let's have a look at it. We're going to differentiate that. How do you differentiate it? The 3 goes to the front. And the two become the three becomes the two. The inside stays the same, and we times by the derivative of the inside. So my goodness, there it is. So it doesn't matter if I had this as written as over x cubed or square root or a cube root or anything. I could say sine in here. It wouldn't matter what it is. The same pattern applies. A bracket with the power is a chain rule. Three to the front. Leave the inside the same. Decrease the power by one times the derivative of the inside. And over here, they said they wanted that when x was 2. Now, sometimes they won't directly tell you like that. In this case, I'll put it into a table, and you're going to pick the right values out of the table. I'll show you a bit of idea on that sort of stuff in a moment. No, it's nothing like you've seen in the textbook. I don't know if you've seen anything like this in past exams as well. Um, I haven't. I can't remember any. But let's have a look at it here. So now we're just going to do substitution. So we've got 3 times... What the function when we're talking about 2. So the function, oh, I could write it, let's write it. F2 plus 2, I just don't want to become too laborious, guys. And then we want the derivative when it's 2. So now we just go substitution. F2 is 1 plus a 2. We're going to square it. And F dash 2 is 4. And then you figure out what that is, which is 3 times 3 squared. So that's 3 minus a 27 times 4, which is 108. Hopefully I haven't made a mistake. Ah, oh, guys, it's just the same thing, the old chain rule, but written in a weird way. So I hope that helps. So I've got another one coming in mind. Let's see what I can do. So here's another one. Instead of giving you the y values, they come on with a table. They give you some weird numbers. They don't have to be 1, 2, 3, 4. They can be decimals, fractions, or anything. They tell you the x values. They don't tell you the y values, but they tell you the derivative. And they tell you the second derivative. Hopefully you've seen it in some other exam papers, something like this. But this is different again. Then they said, from that table of values, and that's all they tell you, well, there's a bit more, but it's got nothing to do with this. Where does this graph <coughs> have a local max and a local min? And I want to torment you guys and go, what happens to a local max and a local min? So, there's a local max. And what do we say? The first derivative... The first derivative is zero. And there's, so that's a local max. And of course, you're all okay with this. Humor me for a second. Guys, um, just take it in. The uh, first derivative down here is also zero. So what are we saying? The gradient is zero. The gradient is zero. So up here, first derivative is gradient. So that's the m values, the gradient values. And we want them to be zero. We want to torment you. The, so... Is the gradient zero? No. Is the gradient zero? No. Oh, look at that. There it is. The gradient is zero. Whoops. There it is. There it is. Zach. I hope you look at these, mate, and not just once. And there it is also. There's the gradient of zero. Now, they tell us that one's a max and one's a min. If you guess, and if you guess them wrong, I don't think you get any marks. So you need to actually understand the next step. What's happening here? The second derivative... What's the second derivative here? It is negative, less than zero. What's the second derivative here? Second derivative here is positive because concave up, it's facing up, the cave's facing up. It's, it's greater than zero. So we're just talking about that being neg. We're talking about that being positive. Now, guys, this is so much, this is so useful for the rest of the year and everything else they can throw at you. Let's have a look at it. So, this one had a concave up, and this one had a concave down. So the second derivative is, of course, about concavity. Oh, guys, I'd love to make a better video on this, but we'll see what happens. This, this is just for now. I think it's a really good idea. It's helped me to think through what I could say to people. So this one goes up, which means it's a min, and this one goes down. I don't even to, to talk about concave down. So it's a 
But uh, you've got a gradient with zero, so it's either a max or a min, and it's going upwards, which means a min. Um, let's get the gradient side, my guy's name is Fried. The gradient is zero, and it's going down, so the cave is down, so that one is a max. So this one's the max, and this one's the min. And you need to make it really clear which one's which, but they're not asking for the y value. Where does this graph have a local max and a local min? The local max is when x was 2.25, and where does it have a local min? The local min was when x is uh, 1.5. I hope it helps. I don't know if I'll do any more. There might be another one. I'll see what I can do.